Yeah. And uh, maybe you can say a little bit about the Stadium Techno Inferno. Uh, I mean, uh, in what way will it differ from other scooter shows? Uh, how do you plan to surprise your fans? Uh, uh, the, the stage will be, I think, 45 up to 50 meters on the span. And um, it's, it's the biggest venue in, uh, in, in, uh, in Hamburg, which is the stadium, super stadium. Uh, in Arena is not a front of the hall, it's a stadium. stadium. And, um, well, I think we're going to have a lot of dancers, big pyrotechnics, big PA system. Special they guests? Are, they are special guests, but we cannot announce them right now because they will really be surprised. Yes, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll try be... to visit the Stadium Technology Arena. But uh, maybe we'll try to visit. Right. I heard that, that there's a guy from Russia, I don't know the name, but there was one guy who came to uh, our show, I think it was in Bremen, in Germany, uh, during the last tour. And uh, yeah, he came up with the idea to charter a plane uh, to, to get a lot of fans from Russia to help us with a plane. Wow. And I don't know how far this idea grew up up to now, but I think, uh, yeah, if it comes to that, it would be really cool to, to yeah, take part of that. Harry, Harry, Harry uh, in Finland, yes, in Finland, HP mentioned that about, about uh, two across Russia. Here is huge. It will be two. Uh, uh, about two? Yes, about two in Russia. Um, we are working on that, but there's nothing really confirmed right now. There are talks, but uh, nothing really concrete, which, can, uh, which I can confirm right now. Because uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of crowd uh, are waiting for this concert. In St. Petersburg and in Moscow, of course. Uh, it's, it's always difficult. You, don't, you, want, you want to do the best show. And uh, sometimes, you know, if you're playing in, um, in an arena where, where there are only like, two or three thousand people, there's not enough money collected to, to make the show really big because we cannot come and, and, and take 30, some 50,000 euros with us to make it big. It, 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 it's, at least it has to, you know, uh, it has to be a zero level <laughs> to really work. And um, this was a, a problem we sometimes had because. And so we, Remix. I think we we'll maybe content, concentrate uh, in the beginning at our DJ shows, uh, which are, I think, much easier for because they are they directly, by the way. They're, they're, they're directly in front of us. They, they, the CHP, the, 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 it's nice, the, the it's thing. nice, and it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a kind of you know celebrating together. And but I think I hope and I think there will also be a uh, tour in Russia. Okay, we, we hope that there will be a tour in Russia. Uh, Please, a few strange questions. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Come on. Okay. Uh, does the commercial success mean a lot of you? Uh, would you be able to release an album that your fans would really like to hear, uh, knowing beforehand that the style uh, it is made in will not be really commercially <laughs> successful? Well, we sometimes did this with singers, like you know, um, let's 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 take out Rasmus Sansen, let's take out uh, No Fate, um, you know the, the the more slower singers we, we had. Yeah. Um, and um, this was uh, like Shane Cat, it was also a little bit more stylish and uh, commercial. We sometimes do this, business, but you know, it's not for us, it's not about the money, for us it's about the imagination, how people will react on the song that they release. And if you've got the live situation in mind, if you imagine yourself standing on the stage, listening to the song and thinking about how will the people react if they see us on stage and listen to the song. And if you take this kind of, um, you know, um, this kind of situation, you always try to produce something that will kick the people off their asses. You know? <laughs> and this is not because of our bank accounts, but you know, because you want to be successful as a musician. No, no such musician can really honestly tell me that he doesn't want to be successful or you know, recognized or get the positive vibe back from the crowd. Everybody wants to like, be like, oh, I'm the master of rock and roll. And, hey, that's what it's all about. And we, we just want to do something that kicks the people. And um, if it's working that way, we are really satisfied. And of course, 
the, the financial income afterwards is better than, than with a not so successful scene. Other, on the other hand, there are songs like No Fade, which we really uh, love and still are uh, uh, playing on our, on our live shows. Uh, but it wasn't a commercial hit, it was on the thing for the 40 or something like that in Germany. It was totally flop, but we still love it. Okay, Rick, and uh, sometimes uh, a lot of fans uh, uh, want, want to see you, uh, to see your style. Uh, sometimes return to old styles, yes? Uh, 94, and the beat, go, and the beat goes on, our head goes on, and we <laughs> this get... Is, this, is always the sound is, is, this is always a difficult thing. If you are you know, watching the forums or the blogs or um, the, the, the Facebook, Twitter thing, If you release something that's, that sounds like the old days, all people will say, oh my god, they, yeah. they did the same thing they ever did. Why didn't they change some parts? Why didn't they try out something new? If you do something new, people are oh my god, they changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true, absolutely. It's absolutely. You know, and um, then it comes to the point, you always, you, you only can do what you like at the moment. You always, you only can, you always have to let the heart decide. Um, and I think that it's, it's the most honest thing you can do Sash. to the people to, to do something that's really that kicks yourself. And that's Remix. Awesome. Okay, and uh, one more strange uh, mm. question: uh, Who chose the name for Jador Hardcore B-side, and uh, why did he choose it? Uh, as far as we know, "Douchebag" is a bad word, uh, and uh, it does not go with the track sound at all. <laughs> <laughs> why did he choose it? This was HP's idea. I'm not uh, I, HP. I know it. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> it was HP. Oh Don't ask me now why. There, there was a particular reason for this. Because you see, um, always if, if, if there's something strange, something weird about our lyrics, there's always a particular reason for it. Like take, take for example, uh, the respect to the man in the ice cream thing, which is um, mix, mix. in fact uh, respect to the KLF. Because you know the KLF uh, drove around with an ice cream supporting beer to the people uh, at Christmas, the homeless people. And we said, well, that's a nice job, respect. And this is the story behind it. But, oh, please don't ask me what douchebag. There, there was a particular reason for that. I know it's not uh, just, HP just is a little nonsense, bit strange. But, <laughs> but I don't know the reason now. <laughs> okay, and uh, the third strange maybe question. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, uh, did you read an open letter from Techno Boy uh, that appeared on, at his official site after Scooter Under the Radar over the top album was released? Uh, um, and uh, uh, what can you say uh, about uh, this letter? I think, yeah, you see, I, I think maybe he was in a strange mood. I, la I later on heard uh, that uh, well, he's a good friend of. Um, I like it from, um, from Dave, Dave uh, 202, you know? Ah, okay. Uh, and um, Dave is also a friend of, of, of us and HP. And, um, and um, yeah, it's, it's really great uh, stuff. 